Hi, in today's video, I want to speak on the topic, can I lose my salvation as a Christian? I grew up hearing teachings that affirmed that thought, that you can lose your salvation. Maybe when you sin, when you fail, when you are weak. And honestly, I believed these teachings. Through my experience, it led me to becoming more self-conscious and more sin-conscious and having me in bondage to sin and my addictions. I now realize that it is negating the work that Christ did at the cross. My first point of consideration is, do you lose your salvation when you sin? This was something that was said over and over again. I grew up in church hearing teachings like, you are saved by grace, but now you have to keep the law, do this, that, and the third to be righteous before God. They will go ahead to say, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. I would ask myself the question now, did you walk in that salvation? Because they never go ahead to complete that scripture which says, For it is God who works in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Because it wasn't about us being independent of God that now you are saved by grace. You have to independently obey God. You have to independently on your own, by your self-effort, by your own strength, try to keep the law to become righteous. I struggled when I believed that because I did not know better. I was living in ignorance. I didn't hear any other thing. I grew up into that. When I sinned, I would beat myself over because of my sin. I would cry and tell God, oh, I will not do this again. I will never do this again. I will never fail you again. But I still failed him. In Romans chapter 5 verse 8, scripture says, but God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. God commended his love to us when we did not solicit for that love. God loved us when we were still sinners, which is salvation came to us when we were sinners. And now when you believe the thought that you can lose your salvation when you sin, my question is, did you gain your salvation by becoming holy? Did you gain your salvation by your righteous doings, how did you gain your salvation? Because scripture here is clear that you were a sinner when salvation met you. Because the essence of salvation is to save you from sin. As I was growing up, when they would talk about Jesus and giving your life to Jesus and believing in Jesus, all I thought to myself was, I need to make myself clean so that I can be worthy to stand before him. But that was an error because of what I heard. I believed wrong. My conviction was on the wrong ground. And I know there are so many believers who are in this place when they think I need to become holy so that I can be saved. I need to become righteous. I need to start doing right so that God can accept me because they don't feel accepted by God because they are feeling unworthy to stand before God. They are feeling that like they are not enough. Nothing they ever do is enough. Everything they do is out of guilt. And they feel condemned. Even when scripture says that there is now therefore no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. So how come you tell me when I fail that I will lose my salvation? Is it that fickle? In Acts of the Apostles chapter 15, some certain brethren told the Gentile believers, you need to keep the law of Moses to be saved. And Peter's response was, we believe that we are all saved the same way by the undeserved grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. So the thought that you can make yourself clean before you come to God is a lie. How can you clean yourself before taking a bath? Salvation was given because of sin. So if sin can make salvation become invalid, then it means whatever was done there at the cross by Jesus was just a waste. But that would be a lie. I see why Paul said, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ because it is the power of God unto salvation. Because there are so many people who are propagating another gospel to tell you that your sin is more powerful than the salvation that was given to you. And that is a lie. Your sin was great, yes, but the sacrifice of Jesus was greater. And that is what brought salvation. And in fact, I got this revelation which blew my mind. That your salvation is a person. Your salvation has a name and his name is Jesus. So we do not need to think we could lose salvation because that would mean we could lose Jesus on our own because we sin. You know, when we sin, our sin does not irritate our Savior. Our sin is a reminder to us that we cannot do it alone. We need our Savior 
to be saved, to be removed from under sin, to live in victory with our Savior, Jesus Christ. Number two, your position is affirmative. Your salvation cannot be retrieved. I believe strongly that you cannot lose your salvation once you are saved. I know so many people will come and say, the scripture says, he that thinks he stands, be careful, lest he falls. Yeah, if you think you stand on your own, if you think you stand by your efforts, if you think you stand by your own right doing, that is when you can fall. But once you know that your standing is not based on being independent of God, but you are depending totally on God, your standing can be affirmed. Your position can be affirmed because you're believing that because of what Christ has done, you are coming under this canopy to be saved and to live saved daily. That is where your mind keeps being transformed. And when temptation comes, God then gives you a way of escape from those temptations. Scriptures in Hebrews chapter 10 verse 10 says, For God's will was for us to be made holy by the sacrifice of the body of Jesus Christ once for all time. I don't know if scripture can be more certain than that for us to know that our position is affirmative. Christ did it once for all time. He will never die again. And we accept once for all time, once we accept him. It is not something that is on and off. On and off. I'm saved today. Tomorrow I'm not saved again. I'm saved today. If I miss it, the next one hour, I'm unsaved. And that is not in line with the character of God. Now let me share this with you. The devil was caught off guard. He did not think that Christ dying would mean the disruption of everything that he has done to make sure that he actually makes man to be alienated from God. Paul said it in Corinthians, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory, which none of the rulers of this world, this age, knew. For had they known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. The devil from the garden deceived man, and man fell and he was happy because he was able to cause a rift between the relationship of God and man. From there, God promised the seed of the woman to come, which is Jesus. When Christ came, he was trying to kill Christ so that the potential of man receiving salvation would not exist at all. When he saw he could not kill him, when Christ started in his ministry, he tried to distract him. He could not. He still fell. So now he thought he had a good opportunity at the cross because in his mind, he thought that when Christ is killed, that is the end for all mankind. He thought that when Christ is crucified, that is the end. Man will never be saved again. The rift between God and man will never be closed. The deceiver was deceived. The crucifixion of Jesus became his greatest undoing. And now we can receive this salvation and have a position of righteousness that we are not righteous by our own works. We are not righteous by our own doing, but we are righteous because of the finished work of Jesus Christ at the cross. Does that mean that the devil gave up? No. He is now scheming to make sure that he puts many believers in a faulty foundation of belief. And the scripture says, if the foundation is faulty, what can the righteous do? Certainly nothing. So the devil is making sure that the teaching that you can lose your salvation is propagated widely, which has been done. This is the devil playing on the mind of Christians to make sure that they don't come to the knowledge of truth. Because if every believer comes to the knowledge of truth, that Christ dying on the cross settled everything about their life and their future with God, he knows that. Certainly, he has lost the battle. Your salvation cannot be retrieved from you. God did not save you so that tomorrow, if you fail, you will retrieve the salvation. God is not like man. Scripture says in Colossians, you were dead because of your sins and because your sinful nature was not yet caught away. Then God made you alive in Christ. For he forgave all our sins. He canceled the record of the charges against us and took it away by nailing it to the cross. In this way, he disarmed the spiritual rulers and authorities. He shamed them publicly by his victory over them on the cross. The spiritual powers in the world was disarmed against you, such that they would not have anything against you. But now, what is happening with this kind of erroneous teaching that you can lose your salvation is the devil trying to arm himself again with the law, trying to arm himself again by making you self-conscious. By making you to be in self-righteousness. Number three, the probability of salvation. 
Now, this is funny that I would use this word, the probability of salvation. The erroneous teaching that you can lose your salvation actually makes believers see their salvation as a probability. See their going to heaven as a probability. Maybe I will go to heaven. Luckily, I will go to heaven. This probability mindset makes you live a life of trial and error. Today you do good, tomorrow you fail woefully. You think you can do it on your own. You think you can make it up to God. So now you are struggling. God, just give me one more chance. Just give me one more chance. God says, I don't need to give you one more chance. I have already finished the work. What other chance do you need? All you need is to come and receive this salvation that was given freely. When you think you can lose your salvation, you'll be so uncertain. You'll be filled with shame and guilt and condemnation. All these are not things that your Savior wished that you would feel. And like I said, that I believe this teaching, when I was in that mindset of belief, I would feel like I'm never enough. I would read the Bible and I never read enough. I was not holy enough. I did not fast enough. Maybe that's why I was falling into sin. I did not do this enough. That's why this and that was happening. And when I would fall into sin, I would punish myself with fasting because I thought that if I punish myself with fasting, maybe God will see that I'm trying my best. And a lot of Christians are still doing this. No, salvation has been provided. Receive the forgiveness of Christ. First of all, if you are fasting, fast to become closer to God. I was never stable. There was no stability in this mindset and this kind of lifestyle and this belief. Because on my good days, when I wake up and do all my routine and all the rituals, read my Bible, pray and do this and I walk out with my pride. I'm like, today is a good day. My pride now comes in because I feel like I am God's right hand man. I've done something noble today. I've done something good today. But on my bad days, I will come to a place of sticking my face down, feeling condemned because I'm like, how did you fail? Why did you fail? Why did I was in this place not finding freedom. I felt so unworthy of my Savior. I was in ignorance. The assurance of eternal life was zero. And I would ask God, oh God, please, by your mercy, don't make me miss heaven. Heaven is the goal. Yes, heaven is the goal. But the teaching that you can lose your salvation will keep you hooked, not knowing that eternal life has been given to you. So now you are just going to evangelize to make people come to God so that God, please just consider this. Use this to consider me because I know myself that I've not been able to do right. God doesn't need you to try to tweak him to save you. He has already saved you. All you need is to live with him, live for him, enjoy your relationship with him. So being on earth, when you know that you cannot lose this salvation that is given to you by God, all you need to do is to have this beautiful relationship with God and become more intimate with him. You are now waiting confidently with assurance that when he comes you now see him face to face and now this will be the consummation of this beautiful relationship with him jesus said to the disciples in john 14 don't let your heart be troubled trust in god and trust also in me there is more than enough room in my father's home if it were not so would i have told you that i am going to prepare a place for you jesus would not assure you of eternal life or that he has given you eternal life, if it were not so. He would not lie. God cannot lie. He is not a man. If he says he has given you eternal life, he has. All you need to do is receive eternal life from Christ. And once you receive eternal life, it can never be taken away. It is eternal. Would this make you want to sin? No. This would make you grateful. If you are genuine, this would make you grateful to God. This would make you blessed. Because you were looking for a way of freedom and now freedom has been presented to you. It doesn't make it cheap because it cost Jesus his life. It cost him everything. It cost him his glory to come down to earth to save you and me. Number four, will the message of your eternal security promote sin? Now, this is the fear that a lot of believers have, a lot of sincere Christians have. That if you tell people that they are eternally secure, they are going to sin. No true believer, no true Christian is looking for a way into sin. Nobody at all that truly wants freedom is addicted and in sin is looking for a way into sin. They are looking for a way of freedom. It is just that they are caught up in sin. When I was struggling with my addictions and my sin, I was not looking for a way into it. I was looking for a way of freedom and the freedom did not come 
by this kind of teaching. Instead, this kind of teaching held me more into bondage. We know that God's children do not make a practice of sinning, for God's son holds them securely. The evil one cannot touch them. So this is not even about you and I. This is about Christ. He saved us and it is his place to keep us. We are kept by him. He holds us securely. So if you believe in Christ and believe you have eternal security, it is a life of total dependence on God. And that is what faith is. And that is what trusting God is. It is relying on God just the same way you relied on him for your salvation. You should rely on him to keep you. It is the self-righteousness and sin consciousness that makes Christians fall into sin and keep failing. It is not the belief that you are the righteousness of God in Christ that would lead you into sin. Actually, it is the reverse. When you believe that you are the righteousness of God in Christ, it gives you assurance and makes you know you are already on a righteous ground. Your position is on a righteous position. So it's just like I'm wearing white. I'm clean. What would make me run out now? To go to the dead to play. I'm not a pig that loves the dead. I can't go to wallow and now I'm dating my wife. Because if I believe I'm clean, I can't walk around looking for a way to get dirty so that I can come to be clean again. That doesn't make sense. If I believe I'm clean, I want to remain clean. Nobody wears a good attire and walks out and be like, I need a car to just walk by and splash dirty water on me or I need to be dirty. No. It is actually when you feel you are dirty that you want to become more dirty so that you can clean up. And that is what happens when a believer feels like I've sinned and then they feel guilty. So they will just go again to sin again and just be like, after I go and ask God for forgiveness. You don't need to be in this place of defeat. You need to come to a place of victory in Christ. Scripture says sin is no longer your master for you no longer live under the requirements of the law. Instead, you live under the freedom of God's grace. The message of your eternal security in Christ actually brings you to a place of assurance to live life with confidence, following God with confidence. Now you will talk about the scripture in Hebrews. The scripture in Hebrews said, if we deliberately sin, there is no more sacrifice for sin. The sacrifice of Christ was once for all time. So as a believer, if you deliberately sin, it would be an insult to the work of Christ. It would be you trampling on the Son of God like the scripture explains in that Hebrews 10. It would be you treating the Son of God and his work with contempt. And no true believer wants to make Christ feel that way. No true believer wants Christ to feel that way. So the message that is propagated that you can lose your salvation is from man's philosophy such that they feel like they, can, they need to put a checker on people so that people will not, you know, lose restraint. You don't need to put a check on people. The Holy Spirit is there to check on them. The Holy Spirit is there to convict them. Now you don't need to give them a certain law and rules. The Bible says, I have written my laws in their hearts. And the Holy Spirit is there to teach, to counsel. The Holy Spirit is there to convict, to lead them to truth. So it is for us to know that it is the grace of God that saved us. And it is that same grace that will keep us. Titus 2 says, For the grace of God has been revealed, bringing salvation to all people. And we are instructed to turn from godless living and sinful pleasures. We should live in this evil world with wisdom, righteousness, and devotion to God. While we look forward with hope to that wonderful day when the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, will be revealed. He gave his life to free us from every kind of sin, to cleanse us and to make us his very own people totally committed to doing good deeds. So when you believe in the grace of God, it cannot but make you committed to doing good deeds. It can lead you to have the desire to sin more. Why would you? Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it has been a blessing and it's helpful to you. I want you to let me know what you think in the comment section and we can discuss more down there. Subscribe to my YouTube channel and give this video a thumbs up if it's been a blessing. Share it to other people for them to see and be blessed also. I am Uwe Mekwan. This is my YouTube channel. I would love to see you in my next YouTube video. Thank you. God bless you. Bye-bye.